Hello everyone, Carlos Machado here again. I'm here with my partner, Mr. Mike Tromblick. And uh, we're gonna work here real quick, a couple scenarios when you're passing the guard. How to preserve your stance, how to recover your stance, and from that point on, what strategies do you have to break up the guard? So here I have a mic uh, on top, I mean on the bottom, sorry. And one of the things that happens in the beginning is the grip battle, okay? So most students sometimes they kind of target uh, the arm, but when Mike really goes for the fight, it's really hard for me to stop his hands from catching something, okay? So in the battle for grip, okay, a lot of times what I do, I see if I can get outside the hand. So when I say go, instead of just committing your arms, you kind of get ready to slap the outside. So here you go and grab me. You see, I kind of deflect the arm, okay? And basically here, this is what I teach for white or black belts. If I can cross his arms, this is called the handcuff, okay? And I'll switch my grip to the top arm and put just a little bit of pressure there. This won't stay for long. If I stay here, go ahead and bump and move, he eventually is gonna get out. But once I get to here, okay, my fingers open, I try to actually literally not just stay with the top hand, I try to see if I can grab both arms at once, okay? Put my elbow down, I shake, and from here, once my elbows connect to the hip, I kind of keep pushing and turning. It gives me a lot of torque, okay? Start over again. So this is called the handcuff approach, okay? So I'm here with uh, my partner. Instead of going from the inside, as we start, I go on the outside. As I put one arm on top of the other, I block. If he ever escapes and recovers the arm, go ahead. I keep fighting here. See here, I'm always trying to, and as we go into that deflection, once the arms cross, double up on the top one, fingers really wide so your thumb catches a little bit. Uh, you kind of, when you move back, another thing here important, okay? A lot of people like to put one knee in the middle and go back. As long as I have a gap between my elbow and his body, I don't have enough pressure. So here what I do is I kind of wiggle. Do you see here? I wiggle and then from here, look, the elbows connect. Once the elbows connect, the push gets stronger, okay? Lock again. Now, if I go for the belt, which is a substitute over here, he still has his hands free to grab. So it's gonna be a little tug of war here, okay? Go ahead and keep pulling. So here I have to put my elbows in and try to pull me. Yeah, that, that way I kind of tuck, yeah. He kind of holds a little bit more when I kind of tuck my elbows in, okay? And he stays strong. All I try to do is same thing, connect the hip, and I only push when he pulls. See what I'm saying? Eventually he, the legs get tired, all right? So these are the two basic low stance guard break techniques that I like when I say can anticipate my partner's grip. So one more time recap, you go outside, go outside, arm on top of the other arm, try to grab both if possible, wiggle your body and both knees start to move away at the same time. Here what's important as he tries to recover, look, my elbows connect. Do you see how much pressure you feel like, like that? You put pressure usually more on one leg than the other. A lot of people, they push from the middle. So when you push from the middle here, don't go. Yeah, I can go, but I feel like you're way stronger there. When I wiggle and I connect, and I put more on one leg than the other, the hip rotation creates the angle that separates the feet. Good there? Cool. Now let's see the other part, when it's no longer available. If your partner reaches out for your collar and you cannot stop your partner, okay, and he starts to actually force your stance over here, instead of trying to do a tug of war, he pulls and you push, okay? I try to connect my arm on top of his elbow here, stay strong, because when I pull the elbow in, pull me. Yeah, if I can just bend this arm a little bit, he loses power. Go ahead and pull me straight down, yeah. Good. Pull me straight down, yeah, pull. Yeah, do you see here? It doesn't mean he doesn't have the leverage because of the legs and the other arm, but this arm is a little weaker, okay? And here, keep going. Here right now, what I like to do is block the other side, and I put my chest on top of his chest. I put now my elbow on his elbow here, and I just stretch my chest and tiptoe forward as I pull my elbow down. So one more time, slow. So I make the arm weak, keep pulling, keep pulling. Here, what I have to guard is his hip. If he moves his hip a little bit, I don't know if you notice, my knees try to stay with the hip, and I try to crunch. Most of the time what happens here 
your partner will try to push you away. Once he does, you're gonna get that surface stance, legs really wide, one leg more forward than the other, and I'll tell you why. If your legs are even in this position, he has the reach to grab either leg or both legs, okay? And the other thing here, stay strong there. Yeah, hold tight, pull. Because my head is offline, I, I have more uh, balance here. What I wanna do is move my head out, stay strong there, so I can create space to swim my arm under. I don't want my arm over, and I'll tell you why in a second. So both of my hands on the hip, okay? Here, if it doesn't do anything, what I like to do is I can drop back my level, stay strong there, I connect my elbows on his body, and I'll put one leg back really far, and the other leg back really far, and I go back to that same original low stance guard break technique. You see how I kind of just, so this is the level change strategy. One more time. So if you connect, I weaken you a little bit here. Yeah, here it's really important that I'm square with the guy, you know, and I block the arm so if he tries to attack me, look. If he tries to move his hips, scoot your hip, I follow him, I'm low. My chest is, you know, so he feels the urge to push. Look, one leg, see I'm in the surfer position. My head is level with his shoulder, not to the head. He stays strong. I already had one arm on the hip, so what do I do? Keep pulling. I go here, okay? And once I'm here in this position, connect the elbows, okay? The, whichever leg you wanna go, let's say if I wanna pass this way. The reason I try to favor facing the other side, he has this collar here, okay? So a lot of times people ask, okay, what if I go here and he, no, no, keep holding that collar. I cannot rotate my shoulder, do you see that? So I can't finish the pass successfully if I choose to go this way, unless I break this grip first. So let's go back just one step. That's why from here, once I connect my body against his hip with my hands and elbows, I'll switch my leg a little bit here. I move this leg a little bit here, or I put this leg back down and the other one further out. So here right now, I get all that push, okay? Some guys may not succumb to this pressure if their legs are too long. So now, in the next segment, we're gonna work when it's worth actually for you to stay on a standing stance and do from there. And I'm gonna introduce to you the concept called the shaky shaky. Let's have fun with that. Okay. So here, uh, my partner starts winning the grip battle, okay, and breaking my stance. I make his arm weak. I crowd his chest, knees off the ground, center with the guy as he starts pushing. Head move offline, one leg forward, the other one back. And here right now, as I'm here in this position, I'll connect, stay strong. Here, I'll do the same thing, but I'm gonna stay, here, I don't know if you notice, all I do is a little leg work here. The, the leg that's far out gets close to the hip. The other one on the outside, Stay there, do you see that? And here, as long as this hand is free, I'll control his leg, crunch, shake, shake. Okay, I don't know if you guys notice, the shake, shake is up and down, not lateral. My hip shakes like this, like I'm bouncing off the mat, like I'm riding a horse. Okay, boom. Okay, one more time. So you're breaking my stance. I make the arm weak. I block the other arm. I crowd my partner, knees off the ground, center, wait for the push, head off line, big step. Here you go the zombie style, tilt your head back and forth so you can swim your arm back. And as long as he's not grabbing the legs, everything is free. Once you get your hip control, both hands under the arm, you're gonna do the little switch. The outside leg, the far leg, closes in to the hip, the other one goes out. And as long as this arm is free, I'm gonna control, crunch, and do the shake, shake. And then from there, like they say, done deal. What can go wrong now? Let's kind of work a what if scenario. One of the what if scenarios when you change levels, standing, is called the V-grip, okay? And let's kind of understand what the V-grip is and what causes to happen. So when I go through the same uh, sequence that we done earlier, and he, I'm gonna kinda cut the chase here. Let's say I control his arm and I move my uh, head offline. Go ahead, pull. Moving my head offline, go back one step. And I wanna show I'm not crowned anymore. I'm just kinda, I make my arms uneven. 
Whichever is his reaching arm or dominant arm, I'm gonna try to kind of post slightly against that shoulder. Move my head offline. The other hand stays on the hip. So I don't wanna see you guys going both one on each shoulder, okay? And I'll tell you later why. So here, hip and shoulder. He pulls, pulls. See here, as long as my head is offline, now I have to stop his hip. Because if not, because I'm tilted, if he scoots his hips out yeah, for a sweep, like you go for a sweep. Yeah, here, you see, he can set up the sweep, and I'm actually favoring that angle. So when I go on even hands, head off line, I will half circle, half circle my leg, because that connects the hip. So if he tries to move that hip, the hip is not going anywhere. Now, on the standing part, I want to just kind of make it easy for everybody here. And I'll give you a couple exercises later on to be able to stand up without a fight. So here, head off line and even hands, half circle and block the hip. You put your toe on the ground with the back leg and stretch. See, I'm already there. Therefore, here you go. Now here, let's talk about the V, okay? I'm gonna go this angle here so you can see better. He will catch the ankle that's close to him. Uh, so often enough, they will also target the same arm. Let's see one of the scenarios. He just wants to break my balance. So he's gonna start pulling my ankle to him, elevate his hip and push my knee with the side of his hip. And a lot of times here, it causes me not just to lose my base, but eventually he will get to the top. Start over again. I'm gonna just put myself back at that V grip again. The other one is he starts with that same position, he stops halfway and come back with a normal plata. And then from here, he can attack or flip me. Okay, so you have two things going bad for you out of that V grip, okay? So the two strategies that I recommend, okay? The first one is reset your low level and sprawl out and start from the beginning. The second, you're gonna control the opposite leg and keep your base strong, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and go back again for the, yeah, control. Control the hip, I'm here, and then now he controls me there. As soon as the guy gets me there, I open my leg like I'm sprawling. Should be here, and then as we go down, I try to go down here and reset the position, go back again. So another thing I do here, go ahead. I try to see if I can hold my uh, arm low. So here, hold, hold, hold tight, look what I'm doing. I turn my hip and I spread out, and therefore here, if he's not careful, I'll, I'll push back and do the leg break from the low stance. One more. So another thing, don't keep this arm idle, stay strong there. You control the arm, look what I do, I turn my hip, spread out, elbow in. Do you see how it kind of goes? And if you try to drag my arm, I'm gonna keep putting my elbow in you and see if I can push. Okay, lock. Now let's go for the second option, which is on the go, and you're still in a standing position, but you're not gonna go low level anymore. Okay, sorry. So here, let's kind of recap. Uneven hands. The hand that you go on top is the one from the dominant arm, offline on your head. Step and trap the foot, push the toe against the ground, stretch the other leg. Once he grabs in here, this arm is free. So here, I try to tuck this elbow in, first thing, regardless of what he does, and then this arm connects the elbow against the other guy's knee and pull that knee in. So if he tries to lift his hip up, you go ahead and, and take me down that way. His hip is limited. Because here, if I don't have that, his hip keeps going up and then he's gonna take me down that way. So here, I put pressure on this leg here. So he tries to do the same thing. He doesn't go anywhere. And a lot of times here, once he gets tired a little bit, if he's not careful, keep going. If he, on what I do, look my foot here. And I'm not saying everybody has to do that. I call that the ballerina foot. I let the guy pull a little bit, I tiptoe turn my heel in, put my foot out. And then from here, I get to the position. This may not be optional if the guy grabs the pants, but it is optional when he just keeps the V, okay? So like, uh, just to recap, you control real quick. I'm gonna be on the position already. So here, on the second option, you control the outside of the knee. I close my fist, and my elbow, go ahead, I turn in as much as I can. 
So if he tries to come back for a shoulder lock, that one is not gonna be as optional as well. Okay? Good job, thank you. Do you like these videos? Do you see something that you wanna share with your friends? Are you gonna come back for more? Guess what? Like and subscribe. And I promise you, we're gonna take care of you send some cool stuff. Don't forget, like, share, and make sure you do your homework. Take care.